Hello again, Common Writer here back with another commentary. Today we're looking at another video response to me. The video is titled, Riding CGI to the Bank, Carmen Rider. Anyways, let's get into it. Pro tip, if you want to make intros that aren't watermarked, look nice, and are free, use Panzoid.com. That's what he used to make my older intros and my outro. Nowadays, I use an intro I bought from SMG3 Snitch Productions, so if you want to buy one, I'll leave a link in the description. Considering that your character is a score bunny, it would make sense to have a Nintendo-themed intro, but that's just a suggestion. By the way, guys, do you want me to bring back the old song? Let me know down below. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video featuring the one and only 64 Beastie Man, aka the guy who has an irregular upload schedule, much like insert other commentator here. Oh come on, I already did a video about someone shitting on just a robot. It's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke! Video, though if I can nitpick the title of it before starting, what does being unfunny inherently have to do with supposedly not understanding the CGI prop in Dorkly's video? It's a reference to how I say, you're not funny, a bunch in this video. Damn, why did I never think of doing a transition like that? How the fuck did you two let this happen? How the fuck did you let Jeffrey Epstein, of all people, into the fucking server? Were you not checking names? Did you not see who you approved before you let them in? Which just goes to show how badly you did your jobs. You let the ghost of a pedophile in my fucking server. Get out! Alright, so there are two problems with this opening skit here. First of all, these two. Virgo and Libra, were they? I mean, you don't exactly say their names in the skit, and the only reason I know who these two are is because I did a bit of digging around on your channel and watching snippets of some of your other videos. Which leads me to my first point. You really should better introduce these characters to people who are new to your channel via this video and haven't met them yet. I mean, you just gave me a reason not to introduce them. I got you to check out my other videos. Well, that and another reason I'll bring up in a second. What's the point of this intro skit? It's not like it connects to the video you're covering in any way. Oh boy, I didn't think I'd talk about this publicly. This is something based on something in my Discord server. In my server, my Dino and Carlbot are named after Virgo and Libra. And before I started this video, there was a raid. Some anti-CC people came into the server and posted cribble porn. Now, I use Carlbot for the verification system, and Dino for the moderation. And the thing with Epstein was that some of the people who were raiding had some... interesting names, including one named after Epstein. So yeah, that's the joke. Hell, I even made this. So, the only people this joke was targeted to is my current fans. Today in Nerd History! Bad news, guys. The war is over and CGI won. In the days of cool Ray Harryhausen stop motion, Toho city stomping, Lucas miniature exploding practical effects are unfortunately over. Actually, no. You're just not looking in the right places. If you want more practical effects, go watch Tokusatsu. Okay, I might give it a watch. But just to be on the safe side, 
could you fill me in on what practical effects I should look out for when watching? Well, stuff like this. Engine cell activate! And this. Not to mention this. Essentially, you did the equivalent of showing me a burger and asking which part is edible. I mean, you have knowledge enough on Tokusatsu to know how good the practical effects are, so... Actually, don't. The last thing we need is more normies. Oh god damn it! why do I always have to get cock-blocked out of information that would potentially help an argument? That wasn't directed at you, but okay. Do you want therapy for that? Cause I know someone who can help you out. No... I think I can handle it. I'll take the therapy. Fortunately over. And while an occasional amazing practical heavy movie comes along like Mad Max Fury Road, nothing will change producers' mind that CG is the way to go, even for times where it doesn't even make sense. This isn't about good CGI versus bad CGI, no. This is about five baffling uses of CGI in movies. What? CGI is like makeup. The best kind of it is when it looks like it's not there. So wouldn't it... Being baffling be a good thing? That would be the case if Mr. Wilson specified that the baffling CGI made him laugh during the movies he mentions in this list, but he doesn't and instead specifies that these are five times in which it doesn't make sense to use CGI in these movies. And if you understand the definition behind the word baffling, then you know that in these instances, Tony is really confused as to why the CGI was used to begin with. The point of my video was to explain why it was used to make it less baffling. Shark. Pog. That was not funny in the slightest, yet I laughed and I hated. Book. Number three, nudity. Thanks to our new and terrible digital age, we now have a bizarre half measure when actors don't want to do nudity. You're not funny. You know, you'd think a member of Dorkly would know how a fucking joke works, but I guess not. Okay, so can I just bring up the phrasing of you're not funny for a second here? It is a running gag! Because in multiple instances throughout this video, Carmen Ryder gets on the Tony Wilson case for this. In most instances, I don't have a problem with it, but here... I don't know. Was he really trying to be funny? I mean, Dorkly is a comedy show, so yes. Trying to be funny? Sure, you could bring up how he used his green screen suit to exaggerate how ridiculous CGI in a nude body can be, but he's more so using it as an example to showcase the awkward process of doing so. Well, he didn't do it well. And I explained in the video that scenes that do CGI nudity are often done because actresses and directors have contractual obligations to not actually appear nude. Eleven movie The Change Up, which for some reason billed itself as a comedy, also tried to trick you into thinking that you saw its two female leads in the butt. You're not funny. Both Olivia Wilde and Leslie Mann covered their bits with pasties that were painted out in post. Leslie Mann reportedly even requested that they size up her goods in the editing room. Yeah? Who doesn't want to look presentable? Okay, first of all, this is a really subjective point as not everybody would want to see a woman with sized up boobs. And secondly, this is a useless interjection which doesn't really add much to the video. I might be inclined to believe that this is a throwaway joke if the tone indicated it as being such, but with the phrasing used here, as well as the expression your character has, I'm kind of led to believe otherwise. It was mostly a joke. If you're familiar with my content, you know that I'm a person of culture. I mean, my entire cast is four girls with huge kabukis, two of them being demons, and one of them being Chalky, and two femboys. With the whole cast being some degree of emo. I feel like a bit of context is in order here. So in the part I'm skipping, Tony Wilson brings up how the shotguns in E.T. were digitally switched out for walkie-talkies in the special edition for the sake of censorship, and Carmen brings up a decent argument about how it's due to the ratings board wanting to keep it PG. 
keep this in mind for the upcoming segment here. The same thing happened to Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, but this time there wasn't even any perceived child endangerment. All it took was someone looking at this Nazi butthole flying off a cliff and deciding that this matte painting wasn't good enough for the HD broadcast version. So someone whipped up a weird computer-generated cliff face. Spielberg relented yet again in this case, and the Blu-ray release reverted back to the original shot. You're not funny. So, instead of talking about the Indiana Jones censorship like he did when Tony brought up the CGI censorship, now yes, I will admit it was stupid for me to leave that in, but at the same time, the thing with Indiana Jones wasn't really censorship. Look, you can't blame George Lucas for wanting to use CGI to realize exotic alien races and fantastical landscapes and exciting space battles. No, the real crime here is Padme- Oh joy, prequel hate. How naive we were back then. First of all, what exactly is the problem with hating the prequel films? You don't offer up any explanations as to why it's a bad thing or why it annoys you so much other than, oh, the sequel trilogy is much worse. I was pointing that out because back then people thought the prequels were the worst thing ever. But little did we know that the sequels were gonna be a thing. Hence why I said, how naive we were back then. Pear. This pear doesn't exist. It's a computerized figment of a fruit, which should be made painfully obvious by the way it just slides onto the fork. And if that doesn't convince you, the bite Natalie Portman takes looks like a toddler trying ice cream. Out of all the problems you found with the prequels at the time, you picked a fucking scene of them eating a pear. I didn't know CinemaSins ran dorkly. Look, I'll agree that this is ultimately rather nitpicky to bring up, but does that mean that this scene shouldn't be on the list? If it looks awkward and baffling to Tony, then it's something he can bring up. Now, I will give you credit in that you do refute him afterwards on his fix of having the team put the pair on a string, but to him, the CGI version still looks really weird. I mean, it's either you put it on a string or CGI it in. That's the alternative. That's all for today. If you want more from me, you can follow my Twitter, watch my DeviantArt, if you want to support the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. If you want to talk to me directly, you can join my Discord server. And until next time, goodbye. So am I. So am I. So am I.